Here we have the power supplies of the ATM switch where the DSP is located and uh, while cleaning the ATM switch I managed to break. You can see it here, I managed to break off some of the wings of the fan. So I decided to take um, them apart, originally to either glue the wings or because the system is very loud and I still dream of the system being able to be in the same room. Normally you would have a server room for the computers because the fans are so loud and these, yeah, you hear me talking at some point, they sound like a jet. So I ordered new quiet fans 20 years later. Let's see how they compare to these old fans. And these are not regulated. So if you turn on the power supply, they run basically at full speed. And yeah, while I have it open, you can see lots of junk. Still, even though I tried to clean it from the outside. Mm. So while I have them open, I take them to the workshop of my dad. Give them a clean with some air. Okay, so here you can see. These were the old fans for the power supply of the switch. And uh, luckily, I didn't even know this when I ordered, but my new fans, they have their own temperature sensor, which is amazing as when you turn it on and you give it full power, it won't start to ramp up the fan speed until it reaches like over 30 or 40 degrees. We see what that means yeah, when the switch is warming up. But first of all, because um, I thought this would be the least, uh, least intrusive, solder these two here. And then I build it into the housing. Let's go. Yeah, welcome back to the Lavo console. In the meantime, we worked on the switch, which is this big boy right here. As you can see, multiple computers of this system were known to be quite noisy. Maybe you remember the first episode where I explained the basic principles of this console and uh, I had to talk quite loud as these things are noisy as hell. And I started to work on the first one and um, as you can see, it has three big fans on the back, these ones here. The way I got this console, it had aftermarket fans installed, which supposedly had their own temperature controller, which I didn't get. So um, the first thing I did was look into the original fans of this console. And I don't know if you can see it down here. These fans were four pin fans, as you might know them from modern computers. I made adapters for the newer, smaller standard. But uh, as I learned, computer fans nowadays employ PWM control for the speed of the fans, which was, and that's what I learned later, which was introduced in 2004. So this being older than 2004, the fourth ray was not PWM, even if it was around five volts, it was actually a voltage control voltage, which I could not use as the motor voltage. It didn't have the power. So uh, I did an adapter. I now use three pin fans with their own temperature sensor. So even though this is properly cooled now and does have quieter fans installed, which is very nice, it still gives me the no fan warning lights because it looks like it, it performs a speed up test to ensure the fans are working. So even though the switch does read the speed control, which is also a voltage that's coming back from the fans, even though it's reading it at first, after a few seconds, it gives the notice that the fans are not working, which is uh, not too much of a problem. I mean, we want the fans to be working to cool down the system and this system is not shutting off when these fans are not working which is nice some computers do but still it does give me the warning lights which i would have loved to be turned off and also the management server will still wait for the fans 
and also give the notice that the fans are not working. So we have these fans in the back, then also the power supplies. They have a fan each, which was running at full speed. So when you would turn the switch on, it would greet you with just like wild fan noise. Um, super old fans, I exchanged these with new quiet fans as well. I now have them with the temperature sensor. I attached it to where it is getting warm and these fans do spin up quite quick. But still with the new fans, it is way quieter. We will do a test. I remember when I um, had this running at first, I was a bit disappointed because the fans do spin and they do make a noise. But then uh, as soon as I turned on one of the computers where I didn't change the fans, it was obvious that this is just way quieter. Even though if it is still on, it is just way quieter. And then let's see what we got. Uh, as you can see, because I wanted to work on some of the cards, I kind of pulled them out a bit so they don't have contact to the power rail, so they are not working. We have essentially just the network module and the master module working, which we need to recognize or to, to get the system up. So let's see. I turn this on. As you hear, it is, it is super quiet. But these fans at the bottom will spin up in a bit of time because these will warm up. So if we <laughs> go, 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 go. <laughs> so if you wait for a bit, the noise will be there. But still, yeah, these are these are new fans. These are very quiet, and a big win over the old ones. Now we see how we continue with the rest of the computers. I know that the power PCs we will not never exchange because this is just different CPUs. And um, but uh, this management server, which I will now turn on in comparison if it has power. <laughs> this may be louder. Yeah, it's just way louder. So, um, but I don't know if I will change the fans of this one as I will try to get this one, which is a Windows NT running on a different hardware because this one also has SCSI. This has a few things why I do not consider it perfect. It wasn't even turned on, so that's that's how loud this computer really is. Okay. Welcome back to the Lavo. Let me give you a quick update what happened. We had the control surface assembled. We did some work on the computers and the switch. Replaced some fans. So that's working a bit quieter. Now we are trying to get the first signals out of it. So first step for me was to hook up some of the interface units. Now I have a chart that shows how it was previously configured. So which interfaces it is expecting with what address on which port of the switch. Super nice so we don't have to reconfigure everything and see what's working. Now I have my laptop feeding me a signal via a simple audio interface to one of the AD units. I will now go to my routing matrix and route these mic inputs to my channel inputs. I'm on channels. Okay. So when I did this first, what I noticed would be no signal yet here, even though I am sending. So I went to channel two, we are on channel two with the input. I went on channel two and turned up the gain to see if I am getting overload lamps on the interface unit. So let me turn that up. And if we are now looking at the interface, we are actually getting an overload. So the communication from the board 
to the preamp works and I am getting signal. Now I didn't yet figure out why this interface is not or why the signal would not show up on the console but what I did was the following. Now here is a second input ADD interface where I'm now sending signal on channel 2 as well. Now if we go on the routing matrix we would now have channel 9 and 10 and let me route that on the board to input 9 and 10. Now what I would also notice these channels would not even show up on the console so what I have to do is go to the DSP page and set a configuration where I would have all the inputs I want all the outputs and on the monitors configured for how many boards are installed into my switch let me just quickly do that and show you what happens now the board is loaded with channels subgroups etc all configured by the amount of boards and so amount of DSP chips I have and now if I go to my channel 10 which is input 2 on the second board you can see there it is the first sign of life a signal now if I turn if I turn the fader up you're gonna see Here we go. First signal on the board. Displayed here as well. Looking beautiful. Now what I would also do is configure this channel. to send to the main sum 1 and 2 and now I connected a monitoring interface that was used before in the system again with the addresses I had so if I go into the monitoring section now on the board I can say listen to someone in two and there you hear it already I have signal coming back to the interface and now to the input of my sound card which is fantastic first time I'm able to listen to this board now what I can do we are listening on headphone speakers right now I can turn up and down volume but I can also be fancy activate processing like uh, the limiter or if we wish the equalizer boost some bands cut some bands have it react there you have it it's alive and look at it the neon green white combination is quite something also something that I did not expect before I mean the white was obvious but not the neon green on that note let me show you a fancy thing that you can do on this console so if I go to the system page I have a global light bulb dimmer
that I can use? To dim some of the bulbs. Now obviously the neon green scribble strips are not affected. But I still think this is cool. Also, of course, now while we edit, let me show you the bulb tests. Are you ready? There you have it. Let's go again. <laughs> This is so cool. Now, while we are speaking, somebody died on me. And that's what I'm also going to do all the time. You see, there are some modules missing that I kind of just took out of service. I will look after these later. Well, this one kind of still stuck in test mode but that is for ladies now I think this is an absolute win being able to hear the console for the first time ever is so amazing now of course I want to really go into listening to the console on phones hear how it really sounds being able to tweak some of the dynamics and EQs so what I'm gonna do next is try and get the DAW connection running so a digital connection where I can put multi tracks on the board now the board does support MADI so it shouldn't be too complicated complicated <laughs>